Hello Integrated Machine Learning and AI family. In this video I want to show you how to use Python virtual environments. They may seem a little unusual at first. I kind of like to think of them as Docker containers for Python environments. You can literally create completely separate Python environments for different projects you want to work on and you can even have them for multiple versions of Python. I want to show you what I mean by that. Here are all the versions of Python I have on my sh machine right now and it it seems like yesterday um, Python 3.8 was brand new and I was struggling to find time to learn what benefits it had and now we're already on Python 3.9 so there's still a project I'm hot and heavy on using Python 3.7. Probably can, um, now that I'm refactoring it a lot and rebuilding it, I probably will do it in Python 3.9. But I want to show you something else. Oh, let's look at where this is. On my C drive, my main drive for my system, users, my username, app, data, local, programs, Python, and then I've got all my Python versions. And, uh, each of these directories is pretty rich. The other main one that you saw in one of our other videos that we want on our path is this scripts directory. But I'll go back up to this level. And as we install or create different virtual environments for Python, you can find them right here. Now, I actually have been using virtual environment wrappers so long I don't know if they would appear here if you're not using virtual environment wrapper, but I personally really like virtual environment wrapper and I'm just going to show you how to use that and later as you get more skilled and you want to go beyond what I've showed you with virtual environments, you can explore using them without virtual environment wrapper, but also there's some good documentation online on a website if you type virtual environment wrapper uh, windows and docs you'll find the documentation right away in a Google search so again users my username environments and you'll see all your Python environments so first thing um, I want to just show you how we can make sure that if I just type Python at a command prompt or uh, open an IDE and don't specify a specific version of Python. Well, what can we do to make sure which version of Python the system is going to run? I showed this in another video, but I'm just going to type Python at a command prompt. And again, this is uh, uh, con EMU. It's my favorite terminal emulator. Let's see if I can make it. Uh, here we go. There we go, Con EMU, the 64-bit version. Highly recommend you use that on Windows. But now that I've typed Python at this command prompt, I'm going to hit Enter. And sure enough, I see Python 3.2. Now, I know I showed it in another video, but I'm going to show you why I could have told you that was going to happen. If I open up my environment variables, again, I just typed ENV down here in this uh, search bar and it suggested edit the system environment variables. So I brought this up. I'm on the advanced tab of system properties and now I'm going to open up the environment variables and if I edit my path variable I see that of all these Python versions I have 3.9 shows up first. And why do I keep these handy? In case I need to move them to the top of my path uh, variable. If they come, if 3.8, these two go to the top, then when I run a command prompt or I'm in an IDE and I'm not operating a specific virtual environment, it will lead with Python 3.8. So whichever version of Python I want up top, I make sure that's at the top of my path while I'm doing that development. Okay, so I'm going to just back out of that, and I know that if I make, with, with very simple command statements, I'm going to get out of this Python interpreter like that, exit with parentheses, and then I'm going to do CLS to clear that so I have a clean slate. 
<clears throat> so if I use very simple commands here in a terminal shell, it's going to use Python 3.9.2 by default. So now I want to do a pip install virtual environment wrapper dash win. Now if you were installing virtual environment wrapper for Linux, you wouldn't need the dash win. So I'll hit enter and we'll watch what pip does for us. And by the way, I did have this installed, but I uninstalled it so you would see the same type of messages that you'll see when you install it. So it looks like everything went great. Okay, now that we know virtual environment wrapper for Windows installed OK, I want to point something more specific out for your intellectual pleasure. It's this. Because we were running that for Python 3.9, it went specifically to Python 3.9. Let me show you what I mean. If we go down into Python 3.9 and scripts, you can see that the virtual environment wrapper files that get added that are specific to virtual environment wrapper were added inside the scripts directory. Now, if we had only been up to Python 3.7 and I was showing you it, how to install virtual environment wrapper windows for that, we would have gone here and seen the same sort of thing. Okay, so I want to just be careful that you know I installed virtual environment wrapper for version 3.9. Now that'll become, that, that's not a big deal right now if you're only using the latest version of Python, etc. But if you're trying to manage uh, virtual environments for many different Python versions, which you might get into, you can see you might end up with something like what I have here. You can see I'm using Python 3.8 for transformers because I think uh, some of the stuff I need to do install for transformers, for example, isn't available for 3.9 yet. It may be now by the time I'm making this. I just haven't bothered to go check. So even that can give you a feel for why you might end up with multiple environments. But again, if you can always keep your code rounded up to the latest version of Python and you've checked it or you don't mind dealing with updating it that way, go for it. That's not a bad approach. It just, depending on how big your projects and your developments are, th this is my world is what I'm saying. Okay, so now that we've seen that, I want to actually go make a virtual environment. So, and because my memory is fuzzy sometimes, I'm going to go back and look at that script name. I could use the documentation, but I'm just being lazy. Ah, it's make virtual environment. And since it's a batch file, I'm going to be even lazier and just copy that part. I know that's all I need since it's a batch file. And I'll just paste that in here. And I'm going to name it pi39new. And I'll probably get rid of this after our, this video. So boom. And it's super fast, of course. I might fast forward through this. There we go. This is the kind of messages you'll see when it creates a new environment. And again, if you're only going to run one version of Python, you probably don't need to call it something like this. This is just a, um, the way I like to name my environments. Okay. Now, pi39new. Let's go look. Sure enough, there it is. That's where it got created. Again, users your username environments. Well, now, uh, shoot, I know as a data scientist, I'm going to need pandas. So, and this might not work. Oh, that won't work. I need to say pip install pandas. Let's see if that works. It might be Python pandas, but I think within a virtual environment. Yeah, there we go. Good. I can't always remember. Sometimes I have to look these things up. Now, when that finishes, what else do you think I'll need? <laughs> Definitely NumPy, at the very least. Probably SciPy, too, or sklearn. But I'm gonna when you install Pandas, it grabs a lot. In fact, I think when I do it, yeah, there you go. Collecting NumPy 
1.16.5. So by installing pandas, I'm getting that. And I'm wondering, you can do some major cool plotting with pandas also. So I'm wondering if it grabs matplotlib also. We'll see. So here you go. Uh, six, you see that being a package that's uh, a dependency for a lot of other big packages. Okay, I ended up fast forwarding through that because after seeing this last message here, it took quite a while. So there was nothing new to see. So I hope you appreciate me saving you from all that dead video time. I actually hit enter once to make sure it's going to be okay. Okay, so how do we get out of this virtual environment so we could perhaps get into a new one? The way I like to do it is just deactivate, and that's all you have to type. It already knows what virtual environment you're in, so if you deactivate, you can see that the, the information on which directory we're in goes back to the normal state. Whereas when you're in a specific virtual environment, it lets you know right here before the cursor or the command prompt. So what if I wanted to now go into another one? I say work on and I say that environment. But what if I just type work on? Isn't that nice? It gives me a list of all my virtual environments on this machine. So I'm going to hit the up arrow to get that back because I'm super lazy and don't want to type that again. And now I'll go to my 3.9 standard. And now I'm working in 3.9 standard. And now that I'm through working in that one, I'll deactivate. Now, some of you may be wondering, Tom, what do I do when I'm in my IDE? How can I get to these virtual environments? Well, let me show you. I'm going to pull one over. Where do you go? I've got these open all over the place. So let me get this down to a size you can see it. Okay. Um, let me just clean this up a little bit for you. This is a simple program I wrote um, to clean up the email list from our Slack work group so that Guyth and I can update the invites for our mentoring sessions and our after party, etc. We well, see how I'm on Pi 3.9 standard down here. I only need to click this and it brings up Look at all this. I can even go to Anaconda separately. I hope that helps some of you that I think Kushal. This is the secret. That's where it likes to go put it. And then, <clears throat> again, this would bring you to your username, this, this little part. So here I have my Pi 3.7 standard environment, my Pi 3.7 web, because I love to do full stack stuff with Python web frameworks, but do I ever have any time for it? Not really. Here's a virtual environment I made for I can't remember what. Um, now this is the direct environment, not a virtual environment. This is the direct environment to the 3.7 install. So it, it sees those two. Um, this is Python that comes with LibreOffice because by the way, that's the standard office program that comes with um, with uh, the office suite that comes with your a lot of your Linux distributions. Yes, it uses Python for a lot of stuff. Here's uh, the 3.8 standard. I'm sorry, I'm probably boring y'all with this, but I think it's important. Here's again my uh, environments uh, Pi 3.8 standard. I just said that one. Sorry. Um, this is the main install, not a virtual environment, for Python 3.8. So Visual Studio Code's great this way is what I'm getting at. There's my Transformers virtual environment and under environments there. Here's my 3.9 standard that you saw me switch to. And here's the direct link to 3.9. So um, this was already open, and I would have to actually reload... Um, Visual Studio Code for it to update and see that Pi 3.9 new that I created. But I'm not going to fret about that. I'm just going to switch over to Pi 3.8 standard and you can see it updated it down here. So that's how clean it is to switch between virtual environments when you're in v Visual Studio Code. 
Um, now, some of you may th be thinking, um, why don't I just pip install direct to my Py Python 3.9 install, my, you know, no virtual environment. So let me go down to that one again. Why don't I just pip install to this? You can. That's fine. But in the immortal words of Obi-Wan Kenobi, he would tell you that's so uncivilized. And and I'm I'm serious. I don't want to even bother telling you all the reasons that's just not smart. I'm going to ask you to trust me. And then when you start to do more Python programming and you've done it for a year or two, come back and tell me whether you agreed with that or not. I think you'll say, thank you, Tom, for leading me down the right path. Okay, one last thing. As I explained, when, let me get this cleared. That's short for clear screen, by the way, CLS. If I wanted to uh, in, in create a new virtual environment for Python 3.8 or 3.7, how would I do that? Well, it's not that big a deal. Let me show you what you do. Let's go back over here to our Python installs. And I don't really need to do what I'm doing. I'm just lazy. I know I can go click in here after I've gotten this level and just copy this. So now I've done the ultimate lazy thing. Here's what I can do. I need to first, let's say, um, yes. So I want to uh, create a new virtual environment. So where am I going to find that? Make virtual environment. And then I'm going to create a new name, pi37 new. OK, I'm going to hit Enter. Now, this is went to grab the make virtual environment for uh, Windows, uh, excuse me, virtual environment wrapper for Python 3.7. And it created this Py 3.7 new. Let's just go make sure it showed up. Sure enough, there it is. And now I have a new virtual environment that's using Python 3.7. But notice, I was very careful to use this full path. Why? Because if I had just said, uh, make virtual environment, uh, pi something else, it would have used Python 3.9. But I wanted to force it to use Python 3.7. So I hope that was instructive. This is only when you know you want to do a virtual environment for one that's... Um, not at the top or not at the front of your path variable. Now, you might be thinking, well, what if I didn't have virtual environment wrapper installed for that version of Python? Same thing. We can go up here. Now, I'm going to back up one directory. And then I would do pip install virtual environment, uh, just like we did at the front of the video, wrapper dash win, but I'm being very specific to go down to Python 3.7 and use the pip. It, actually, I messed up. Um, let me come to the end here so I don't screw up this editing. I would still need scripts because that's where uh, pip is included in. Now, just to prove to you it will use the right version of pip, let's go double check. Uh, wrong window. So I'll go up to my Python 3.7. I'll go into scripts. I didn't need to back out like that. And I can use pip, but I could have also used pip 3.7 exe. I just am being extra safe by doing it this way. And you can see the name pip also occurs in this directory for Python 3.7. So I can use pip, pip 3.7, pip 3, but they all three occur, but you still just need to know what your system's going to do path order-wise. And then I'm not going to run this one, but that's what I would do if this version of Python 
did not already have virtual environment wrapper for Windows installed, but it's one of the first things I do when I install a new version of Python. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful. Please help me help you better by letting me know how I can improve this instructional video. And I'll see you in class. Take care.